So, uh, so we're we're gonna we're we're starting out. I know this is actually uh, a digest heap, which is for the end of a meal. But we're going to uh, kick off our Greek uh, tour today uh, with some ouzo, which is a, a Greek um, digestif um, made with anise, uh, so it has a very licorice kind of flavor. Um, it's very similar to sambuca. Sambuca, uh, and the Germans also have. I can't. I can't remember what the alcohol is, but it's basically exactly. The same. They have one too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, all hey, love their, they all love their. Uh, their hey, liquor, Nancy. Licorice yeah. um, We're getting cookies. Yes, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, and I got that message this morning from Kara that uh, wanted to send us some lemon lemon cookies. So, um, so we're gonna start with just a little bit of uh, a little bit of ouzo, just for fun, just to uh, you know get the get the get the party started. <laughs> um, uh, Carolyn and uh, them are drinking uh, Metaxa. Metaxa? Huh. I don't know what that is. Can you tell me what that is? I don't know what that is. Either. I know. Hey, Robert. Robert uh, Schmidt. So cheers. 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 Yes, it is an acquired taste. Uh, so we're going to Greece. It's surprisingly a little chilly in Greece today. <laughs> it's it a, is. a little rainy. It's a little <laughs> rainy and chilly here too. Uh, um, it's been raining for the last couple days, and now I'm talking that there might be, we might see a snow flurry. That's On just Saturday. crazy. Yep. It is May, people. Come on. Come on. Get it together. Um, oh, it's a Greek brandy. Oh, cool. All right. We gotta try that. Oh yeah. Be nice. Yeah, that may be better than Uzo. Oh, Nancy said they mailed them out this afternoon. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I think, I've, I think I've gained more than the COVID-19s. <laughs> oh my god, I know. After all this is over, I'm going to have to like... Who am I kidding? I was going to say an exercise. Why start it now? Um, Alright, I've had enough of that. Well, we have been good about not uh, having our little exercise machine become like a coat wreck. So, I'm pretty proud about that. Yes. <clears throat> You're not voted out, Kathy. She's drinking a, a Cali Sa Blanc. Good. Nothing wrong with that. Good. So during uh, during our, our uh, making of food, we were going to enjoy some wine today. I know we've done uh, specialty cocktails from the different countries. Um, as we visited uh, Mexico and we went to uh, the Caribbean, right? Um, cocktails aren't really a big thing in Europe too much. Um, that was an American uh, creation during the uh, Prohibition times is when the cocktail was created adding fruit and so forth, uh, juices to, to alcohol. Um, so you don't really, they have, uh, they have cut bars and so forth in Europe, uh, by all means. Um, uh, so if you're going over there and you really need, you know, uh, a Manhattan or something, they'll, they'll, you might have to tell them what to do, but uh, they could make it. Um, we're just drinking, uh, sangria. Yeah. Sangria. Nice. Hey, Kate Barzi. Hey, Kate. I assume Ford is on with her, maybe? I hope so. Um, so anyway, so I went to the wine store and I wanted to buy a Greek wine for fun, um, but they didn't have any Greek wine. Um, so I went to the next door neighbors, uh, and uh, this is an Israeli wine. Um, so flavor profile to, uh, to country and wine and so forth, uh, the wine would be very similar um, in varietal and flavors profile. Um, so. Uh, and also, I do absolutely like this wine, um, and it's from Israel. So, and it's and it's kosher. So, um, there's that too. Oh, we miss you too. Kate said that they I miss know. us. Got to get back to having like dinner parties and things like that. Well, hopefully, maybe late summer we can have them over for a movie night on the on the new deck. Some people, um, somebody posted today, or yeah, was it today I saw? Uh, they posted a, a, a little phrase, what do you call it, memes, I don't know. A meme? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, it said, I miss, I miss places, I miss, I miss things, I miss people, I just miss nouns. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yay! Kate said, OMG please. Absolutely. And she loves Israeli wine as well. That's cool. Excellent. Yeah, we've had this a couple times. It's really good. Yeah, it's nice and earthy. It's super drinkable, yeah. Um, but yet very, yeah, drinkable. Um, who else? Oh, Jorge just signed on. Hey, Jorge. Hey, nice. You just got a new car, I think I saw. Really? Fun. I know. Uh, 
I'd, I'd say I'm jealous, but we had to get a new car because <laughs> you were in a little bit of an accident before all this happened. So we were kind of forced to get a new car. All of that. All right. So cheers, and we'll get started cheers. on this. So um, Moussaka is, uh, is, is awesome because it's, um, it's, uh, it's just an old, old dish that's been around for many, 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 many centuries. Um, and uh, it's just a classic dish throughout all of Greece. Um, and it's very, it, you'll find it in every local little pub and, and every Greek mother has made it at one point or another and probably often. Um, and we were, you know, so we'll, we'll just get started and we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go. But it's, it's basically a casserole dish. Um, and so... A nice hot plate. Hot dish. <laughs> like a hot dish. Like a hot dish. Uh, <laughs> so, fantastic. Uh, anyway, so, uh, it's, um... What are we going to do? Oh, okay. yes. Do we want to preheat the oven since it's got to be at a real high temperature? Oh, yes. We're going to put the oven on. Uh, we're going to start out by putting on our oven. Um, at uh, 475. Uh, and then, um, hey, Anne. Uh, and we'll get started with the, with the slicing of the, uh, the uh, eggplant. Um, so, if and if you don't like eggplant, and I'm, you know, based on two shows now have been based around the eggplant. This one's not based on the eggplant. In fact, you can barely taste the eggplant in the dish once it's all done. But it does create a good base foundation and a good top um, so it's sandwiched in between with the meat and the tomatoes on the middle um, anyway so uh, but you can it, it just it kind of great because it just absorbs flavors of all sorts of uh, whatever it's with so um, we're, we love we love it um, it's just a really good dish <laughs> it's, just it's good, so tasty it's just a good down home um, comfort food kind of dish. Uh, 475, Carolyn. Yep, 475. So and then we will remember this time that um, at a certain point we then reduce the heat to 400, but 475 to start. Yes. <laughs> we uh, kind of made a mistake last night. It still turned out amazing. Just so you know, we, we, we always uh, do a test run on Sunday nights um, to kind of make sure that the recipe, because Unless it's a recipe I've done in the past and, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with it, um, I could probably just go at it, but uh, I just want to make sure, especially with things like this one, there's so many different recipes out there and I, what I do when I look at recipes, I look over like five, six different recipes and I pull them up, I write down all the ingredients for all, the, all six of them and then I compare them. Um, and. Uh, Hey Joe. And uh, see about, you know, what do I like from this dish? How do they prepare it versus how do, you know, I want to prepare it. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, we talked about last time about how French food or the French created recipes um, to uh, make everything identical. And there's an ongoing little joke that you can go into uh, 12 different restaurants in, in France and order the same thing and it will taste exactly the same in every single restaurant mm -hmm. um, or in every single household. Uh, if you were to do the same in Italy or in Greece or even in Spain, um, you would have 12 different varieties of the same dish. Um, and even looking at moussaka, which is such a, a classic dish, it's such a family historic handed down recipe from one, one generation to the next. I was just about to say, yeah, they're all generational. Um, that, you know, you'll see all these different varieties of the recipe out there. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, one of the, and there's a common thread, you know, and, and in there, oh, always this eggplant. It's typical, always lamb. Um, you know, although we're going to, we said that you can, make, you can do beef instead of lamb if you want. Um, I know. Or a ground meat substitute, like a, if you wanted to make a yes. vegetarian. Yes, uh, like our friend uh, uh, Jonathan um, is vegetarian. And Mara. Mara is vegetarian, but I know Jonathan um, has used a, a meat ground meat substitute for a subject that he did for us. He and made us a shepherd's pie. It was so good. And it's, it was really good, yeah. 
I don't remember right. the name of it, sorry. I can't hey, Jennifer. All right, so, uh, so we've sliced up our eggplant, and we've placed it on a rack, um, and I'm gonna salt it, uh, because I want, I want to uh, draw the moisture out of it. And you can feel pretty liberal about your salt, right? On this? Uh, fairly liberal. We're, you don't want to like, because we're going to pat it dry, but we're not going to rinse it off. So. Okay. You just, the, the salt helps um, draw, draw the moisture, the water, uh, a lot of the water out of it. And this um, is where you opt for the iodized salt as opposed to like a kosher salt, right? Yes, because you want a nice spread of salt out there to kind of like draw that out. And then also what it's also doing is there's, there can, the eggplant can taste a little bitter. Um, and if you salt it and let it rest, um, it draws out that bitterness uh, and draws out the moisture out of it. So it's, it's good. What's um, that thing? <clears throat> what? What's that thing called? What's that thing called? Uh, Alright, so we're going to wash our hands a little bit. Hi, Candace. Hey there. We are headed to Greece and making moussaka. Yes. Alright, so while that's, um, while that's uh, resting, we're going to, uh, in a little bowl, I'll get rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, in a little bowl, we're going to put in about a half a cup uh, of olive oil. Um, and this is going to be, and we're going to herb this olive oil, and we're going to brush this onto the eggplant after we've uh, patted it dry and so forth. So we've got a, a little brush. Now you, you can use a pastry brush. Uh, I I love using just a cheap paint brush from from uh, the hardware store as my um, as my pastry brush always. Uh, it, it it uses a nice horse hair um, and it's cheap and inexpensive and you can after a while toss it and get new ones. Get a new one <laughs> and feel good about that. They're, they're about fifty a piece or something. And there's different sizes, so like if you are using like a big roast or something, you can buy a bigger brush. On a grill, on if a grill. you're brushing barbecue sauce onto something, I have wider brushes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyway, so we'll do that. Uh, so in this, we're going to chop up uh, a bulb of garlic. So this is why we give you all of the like preps ahead of time now, so you can have a sip of your wine or your brandy. If While Brian already, goes to town on uh, garlic. <laughs> garlic is not cooking the kindest. Let me get this one. Okay. Yeah, this one's looking a little brown. Not so yummy? Not so yummy. Yeah, that's better. That would be better. Alright. Uh, so with garlic, as I've said in past classes, um, there's the there's the end, the dry little end that was attached uh, to the core, right? Um, I cut that off. I will ask this question in just a second, Robert. Well, what's the question? Uh, <laughs> we, I think we actually addressed this in a, a class before. <laughs> How do you feel about pre-chopped garlic in squeeze tubes? I think I made the comment about making the mistake of buying a jar of minced garlic and you open the refrigerator and you're like, what, what is, is this? this? <laughs> so, I mean, you know. It's easy, it's an easy go-to. I'm not gonna really judge much, uh, but read read the ingredients. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, um, citric acid and so forth in there to keep that garlic fresh and, and preserved. Um, so there's just nothing, nothing can really substitute good fresh, freshly chopped garlic. Um, it's just like nothing can really substitute freshly ground black pepper. Um, the, t the flavor is just so much more prevalent, stronger, better. Um, but we all use it, even I use it, a pre-ground pepper. Um, it's easier. You can't always have, you know, get the, what you need out of it if you... Um, so, if that's what you're using, that's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. He feels a little judged. <laughs> don't be judged. Uh, see, this is why I don't ask... No, I'm just, I'm just being a food snob. I, 
not trying to judge it. Well, and there's there's um, ways around doing a minced garlic, like doing a food processor, so it, it you can do it quickly. Yes. Um, do it on a, um, a microplane or um, a, a, gr a box grater. <laughs> Jennifer said, uh, Sabrina left, she's on her way to eat this and bring me leftovers. <laughs> We'll, we'll lay it on the, on the, on the patio. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so with garlic, if, you know, once you've got the little ends chopped off, um, you just press it down with the flat side of the knife, and, um, and usually all the skin will pop right off, usually. It's giving me a problem today. I know. We didn't, you know, it didn't get a dress rehearsal, so. It did not. <laughs> All right. I have to say it's a lot of garlic, but it's not overwhelming in the dish. Because you're, you know what I mean. Didn't you feel? No, it's not because we're just brushing it on to the to there, and it's going to roast with the with the eggplant. Hey Susan, um, you guys, I have to tell you, if you've had moussaka before and this is why you're cooking it because you enjoy it, this recipe that Brian sort of adapted from different um, ones he looked at, this is so good. <laughs> oh, okay. It turned out so good. It did. It was a, it's really, it's got some really depth of flavor, which I love. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of a fairly simple dish, but it's just got layer upon layer of just really rich, beautiful flavors. Um, so. And here in a little bit, we'll uh, show them the secret ingredient to this one. Um, all right, so we're gonna chop that up. Susan says hi. Hey, Susan. Miss so many of our friends. Love to Robert. Hope you guys are doing good. I know so, um, like us. I think so many people are just starting. It's starting to get to us. Like the whole being unemployed, being home every single day, and being around each other every single day. Like we still love each other very much, but um, it's just we found a good routine, a good balance to like give ourselves like some space. I sleep time. in always, and so he gets <laughs> the morning to like sort of do his thing and then I'm a night owl so he goes to bed and I get a few hours to catch up on like those shows that I like to watch that he's not so into. So we've, we've found a pretty good balance. Yeah. You know, and I've been busy up in the yard so that's kind of fun. Well, and I think we've talked about this to some people too that like I am grateful that I have you in my life because I can't imagine people that, that are single and, and just that distance all by themselves. It's, it, um, some people have said it, it, is, it is hard. Well, then there's, um, we're going to pop that right into the olive oil there. Hey, Steve Burriette. Um, and then there's some of our New York friends and, and uh, city friends and so forth that live in small little apartments. And, and they might be a couple, but they're in like a small, small quarters. That's yeah, <laughs> grateful for the space. If we were in the downtown apartment, that might get start getting a little, a little tense. We're going to do about, <laughs> uh, two, t about two teaspoons. Um, of uh, chopped uh, mint, um, mint and oregano, very, very uh, common uh, herbs in, uh, in Greek food. Um, as well as like uh, cinnamon and nutmeg too, right? Yeah, so they did, so they, um, being so close, they were kind of the first of, of all the like trade routes with the, with the ships and stuff carrying herbs and, and spices and, um, really? and so forth, um, they were kind of like the first stop, you know, going, because most everything, uh, most of the stuff came from India. Uh, the egg kind of came from India. Um, the, uh, a lot of the spices too, right? A lot of the spices came from India. Oregano came from India. Um, and uh, mint uh, came from India. And, um, you know, and they, so they traded, and that's how they got their wealth, was they traded herbs and spices, and people really um, fell in love with them uh, and started incorporating them in all their cuisine and stuff, so. Hey, Brandon, did you guys get all the ingredients? Are you making it with us tonight?
Does all the garlic go in the olive oil? Yes, it does. Yes. Yes. And we're going to stir that up a little bit. Oh, thanks, Susan. She goes, I love how, how you tell the story of food. Oh, thank That's you. That's why he enjoys it so much. <laughs> That's what got me cooking to begin with. Was, uh, it was just about the history of how food um, uh, and the culture of, of, of where it came from. It's always intrigues me, like, why uh, do they, you know, use this ingredient or that ingredient? So, um, anyway, so we got a nice diced up uh, garlic. You want to put it into the camera a little right bit? Now. Yeah, it's kind of thick, right? Yeah, it's kind of thick uh, and about a half a cup of olive oil. And we're just going to set that aside for a second. <clears throat> and that's also something that, um, you know, you can do an olive oil like that the day beforehand and let those, that mint and that oregano and so forth um, really get into, into it infused into the olive oil. Um, so that's awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, you can see a lot of moisture um, on that's risen to the top now uh, of our eggplant. So because of that, we are going to Take our eggplant and pat it dry. Right. Oh, Lee, I can't wait to see what you make for uh, the pitcher staff tonight for dinner. So, um, Dave Ruiz's bar in uh, Adams Morgan pictures, you know, through the, this whole time, her and uh, Dave and uh, Francisco. Remember Chef Cisco from Level 1? Oh, yeah. They do, every Wednesday, they do a meal and a dessert for the staff. And they can okay. come by and, and pick it up and, you know, they take it out to the car. And oh, that's so just nice. Just show appreciation and that, you know, they're all... Just trying to... We're all know. here for everyone. Yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. last week they made fried chicken and it looks so good. All right. Get that all back onto the pan. So we're going to we're gonna roast this right on the pan, the baking sheet. How's everybody that's cooking with us? Everybody in a pretty good place? I know some people like to watch, like Brenda, she'll watch it and then... Make it and then do it the next day or that week, yeah, so she can pause as she goes. All right, so that's all on there, and then we're going to take that and we're going to uh, brush on our, our garlic and um, oregano, mint, and olive oil. I don't know about you guys, but if you're making it, you, I can smell all of that right now in the bowl. It smells so good. And giving us the thumbs up. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. That's looking really good. Uh, I think one thing we did discover, too, is that uh, this is definitely a dish that you can do a day ahead because the longer it sort of sets and, and gets to the, all those flavors sort of get in, it just, that's, it really. Well, yeah, it's very much like um, a lasagna in that way because it's such a, like, you know, dish that can be made up, frozen, you know, whatever, um, reheated. All right. Hey, Julie. Julie Harshfield. Oh, nice. All right, so... We're going to get that in the oven. It just went off, so it's ready to go. It's ready to go. <laughs> so our oven's at 475. Um, and we're going to just pop this in there for about 15 minutes or so. Um, we want just a nice, good, toasty brown on that. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to clean up our workstation. Um, so, oh, hey, Tim. Oh. Tim Thistleton. Oh, <laughs> hope you're doing well. Miss you. Um, 
Jennifer says, I will be making this next week. She has to get them some sauce. Um, Robert says, my kitchen smells like chocolate chip cookies. I roll. I may have forgotten it was Wednesday until you guys had already started. <laughs> they, they are kind of starting to run together. I don't know. <laughs> you're clear, you're not alone. Oh, the days. The days, yes. Yeah. Public service announcement, today is Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> All right, nice clean work area. Getting on to the center of this dish. All right, so we got uh, two pounds of ground lamb, uh, two medium uh, yellow onions, uh, a small green bell pepper, uh, one lemon. We have uh, a tablespoon of nutmeg um, and a cinnamon stick um, or teaspoon. Teaspoon in that way? It was a uh, teaspoon. Teaspoon. I was like, that doesn't look like a tablespoon. <laughs> um, one tablespoon, that looks like a tablespoon. Uh, one tablespoon of tomato paste, and then we have some uh, whole 28-ounce uh, uh, can of whole peeled uh, plum tomatoes, uh, which we have drained off. Um, we did not drain it off in the first round and realized that it's just so much liquid and it took so long to reduce that down that we just like leave that out. We'll put in a little tomato paste. Stuff. Can we also talk about? I said we mentioned the secret ingredient into this moussaka that I have never had before. Oh, um, the lemon. A lemon. Yes. Um, a little lemon. We're going to zest the outside of that lemon uh, into this, and it's going to give it just really brighten up the flavor uh, of this dish. Uh, and so, yeah, so let's get started. We're going to put uh, about two uh, tablespoons of olive oil in our pan and warm that up to medium heat. Susan says, I think when the quarantine two. ends, you guys should travel to all our homes and cook a live dinner like you used to on your TV show in Rochester. Oh. <laughs> With whatever we have, uh, whatever they have in their kitchen. <laughs> With whatever they have in their kitchen. Yeah, so that's, uh, so some of you know me from when I lived in Rochester and uh, I had the uh, fun time on, with channel, um, channel, what channel was it? It was ABC um, News, uh, local ABC. Um, morning news. Uh, they came out and we did a little thing. We had so much fun. Did a cooking demonstration, and so we decided he wanted to do. Darren um, was the, the the anchor. Yeah. And he wanted to do some fun things where he did like because back then uh, they had the door knock dinners and stuff like that, where they would show up with the chefs. Yes. That show. He wanted to recreate that. Um, what he didn't know uh, was that um, uh, that was all actually pre-planned. Um, Not uh, they so already knew whose house they were going to, they already had known what the ingredients and what they were going to be cooking, um, but his idea was to be totally organic and just at 6 o'clock in the morning, knock on some knock on doors, door, knock on somebody's, somebody's <laughs> door, and, uh, and that did not work out so well. Oh. Um, did we lose people? Well, it says we can't see the video, it's paused on us, but it's, it's working. Is it paused? Are you looking through yours or? I'm look, I'm watching it here. It's it's going. Oh, okay. She's good. Okay. okay. It might have been that funny, but we're. So we're, yeah. We're, so okay. that didn't. We're gonna put this in there in this pan. It didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> it did not quite work out that way. <laughs> but you had a good time. Yeah, we did have a good time. Well, so then we decided, oh, we should kind of pre-plan this. So then we did it again, but this time we knew we already had pre-plan with like the husband or somebody that we were gonna surprise the wife and so forth. So we had some fun, um, but the, uh, the other twist to it was I had to cook from whatever was in their kitchen. Um, and so that sometimes proved to be a bit of a challenge. Um, I have to tell you, we've gotten some traction from uh, Susan's uh, comment. So Brenda says, right. Uh, Julie, uh, Julie Hartsfield said, I'll even buy them whatever ingredients they want. <laughs> and uh, your niece will pay for that as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm doing house visits now. Basically, yeah. No. Would it be easier if everybody just came here? Ooh, guys. <laughs> uh, we're gonna season this a little bit with some salt and pepper. My new toy. Your new pepper grinder, yes. I have one of those uh, big, tall, obnoxious like ones. restaurant ones, <laughs> um, and uh, he never wanted to use it, so we got a smaller. pepper and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to while that's cooking we're going to zest 
a little lime, lime, uh, lemon into that. Okay, so we're gonna you want to be careful when you're zesting that you're getting just the dark yellow uh, surface uh, off. Um, because if you go too far down, you're getting into the white, um, you're getting a lot of bitterness. Um, so you want to just avoid that. Carolyn's buying her plane ticket right now. <laughs> okay. We have three guest rooms, so... I went to type woohoo and it autocorrected to woo boo. <laughs> woo boo? <laughs> yeah, I was able to catch that before I hit send. <laughs> Nothing like good old autocorrect. Yeah, Susan, it's really not a bad road trip from, from you guys to, to here. It's, what, about seven hours? It's not terrible. I mean, it's a day trip, but... Yeah, it's, it's about a seven-hour drive um, from uh, Asheville. We stopped along the way. There was a little, we did. Wine, we did a little winery um, midway between, just before we got across the border into, into um, about... About an hour out, right? Of, yeah. Of, uh, hour, hour and a half, right? Sounds about right. Hour, hour and a half out of tennis, out of uh, um, uh, Asheville. Asheville, um, North Carolina. Uh, before you got into there, there was a, there was a little winery that we stopped at and had a little little lunch. It was nice. It was nice. I hope so. And Brenda said road trip too. I miss our road trips to see each other back and forth. <laughs> we were getting really good about that for a while. All right, well that is uh, sauteing up a little bit. We're going to chop our onions. Um, I think you're next behind, in the sink. Oh, it's behind me. Behind me. Uh -huh. All right. So I always just top, take that top. Do you want your sharpener? All right, take the top and the bottoms off. down the middle. Take, hey Eduardo. Take the outer part off. Hey there. I was going to say hi and I, I didn't want to interrupt Brian. We oh. are doing good and I'm glad to see that you guys are doing good too. Yeah. Two nights ago, Brian laid out some frozen bread dough and uh, let it rise, and he made two almost like personal sized pizza crusts, and uh, and he grilled it out on the on the new grill. And it was so, so good. Grilled pizza. I love grilled pizza. It was so good. <laughs> we did two different ones. You did basically almost like a, a margarita. Yep. Um, we didn't have any fresh basil, but um, we did tomato and fresh moths olive oil and then we had and some oregano and then we had some leftover um, from the chicken uh, I did this with Carolyn and Dave yesterday from the chicken dish we made oh the uh, the uh, cacciatore cacciatore we had some leftover cacciatore sauce that we had frozen and so we defrosted that and then put it on and as a pizza and it was delicious so grilled pizzas this summer I think that should be a thing it is a thing. All right. I'm gonna give our meat a stir here. I'll break it up. Oh, I can smell that lamb. I love the smell of lamb. And the lemon. That lemon zest it really brightens it. And you fresh ground this lamb because you couldn't find ground lamb. <laughs> yeah, so our test run we had ground lamb. Um, then I went back to the grocery store and they didn't have any ground lamb. So I had to use a whole lamb uh, loin and, um, and grind it up. But uh, I had a little food 
meat grinder then attachment to my KitchenAid mixer. So. Um, nothing, you know what, and I, it's a good way to save money too because it was cheaper that way. Um, and if you're, if you want to make like fresh hamburger and you get like uh, chuck, chuck roast. Yeah. Um, and you just cut up the chuck roast and throw it through a grinder. I, I don't do it that often. We always get re regular ground beef, but. Hey Naomi. It is just nice to have fresh, fresh ground and then it's just so good. Uh, Julie Harshfield is full of ideas today <laughs> because she now thinks that you should sing a song while you're chopping. <laughs> oh, you really don't want that to see then I lose viewership and people go away and then they'll stop following me and I'll never, you know. Yeah, no, that's there sorry. Really, there sorry. really is a nut crying from the onion. You know, but uh <laughs> You have some good songs that you sing. I do not. <laughs> yes. um, that's that's Mark's job. Mark <laughs> is the singer in the family. Actually we have a couple singers that just signed on, Robin uh, Robin Foster and Eli. <laughs> see, see don't we all want him to be doing the singing? No. Yes. Zip it, zip it. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're gonna also uh, dice up our bell pepper. Um, all right, Brenda, if Joe's not allowed to tell dad jokes, you can't ask me to sing. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, all right, so when you're cutting up the bell pepper, there's like the little uh, vein and stuff, you wanna get rid of that. Um, Never wanted that. Never wanted that. It's uh, bitter. That's where the bitterness comes in. We want nice, succulent, sweet bell pepper. We could uh, do this to where we sign them in and uh, get them to sing. Get them to sing? <laughs> there we go. Oh, good grief. Brandon, because my voice is so out of shape. Oh my goodness. Is it really? Uh, sorry. What's that? Robin says it's hot and bitter. Ugh. What's hot and bitter? Well, I'm, uh, I'm thinking she's saying where she's, where she is, or maybe she's talking about the... Oh! oh I think she's probably talking about the pepper, sorry. <laughs> oh. It was very bitter. Alright. <laughs> I still love you, Brenda. <laughs> interpretations going on because Robin said uh, laugh out loud Brenda I thought you were asking about the pepper and the pepper middle and not why I won't sing <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Eli says I use the stem from the uh, Cubanelli peppers I got from the farm last week in the uh, pickling liquid for the for the cucumbers oh, oh nice. nice way to use the waste absolutely yeah Alright, so that's all taken care of. <laughs> our, beet, our, um, our lamb is pretty cooked. Nice, nice, no pinkness. Looks like it's cooked all the way through. So what we're going to do is we're going to strain this off. If you have ground beef, there's probably not a lot of, well, depending on your fat content. There's going to be some fat still, and we're going to strain that off. If you have lamb, it's very fatty, and so there's going to be lots of fat. Um, so I'm just going to strain that off into a strainer. And then if you're doing a meat substitute, you'll just use a different oil, like you'd said, like grapeseed oil. Grapeseed or... oil would be good, yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, and then we're going to, so we're just going to strain that off and let, just set that aside. Uh, we're actually going to take about two teaspoons of that oil. Tablespoons. Tablespoons, right. yep. Yeah. Tablespoons, sorry. And put it back in. One, two. There we go. Because um, we're going to fry then up our onions and everything with that. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. <laughs> I just don't sing as much as I used to. Robin has a beautiful voice. All right, we're gonna start sauteing that down. Wash our hands.
Brenda says, looking good. It is starting to look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's check our eggplant. A little bit longer. Might look a little toasty, but not quite there yet. Oh, I feel you. We have a lot of friends who uh, are going through that as well. Robin says, all my gigs got canceled, so she's learning how to cook now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, so while that is sauteing down, we're going to go ahead and add in our cinnamon stick. Uh, we're going to throw in uh, our nutmeg. We'll let that kind of start marinating into the juices of the onion and the bell pepper. Pepper. Mmm, that already smells like grease. We actually had Alexa play good music when we did it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's fun. It's fun. cooking with us, everybody good? Do we need to slow down at all or? All right, there's our eggplant. Look at that, nice and brown, toasty, full of good, rich flavor. We'll set that aside, let that cool down. All right. Our onions look pretty, starting to be a little translucent, which is perfect. We're going to throw our tomatoes in there, start cooking those down. Oh, I should have thrown in the tomato paste, and the tomato paste. <laughs> what? Julie says, smells like grease, like the country, not grease. Yes. You know, for those who didn't. I know. <laughs> I, was, I, no, I, was, I started talking about something else, but I thought about it. As I said, it, like, Greece as in the country people. The country. <laughs> but I would hope you knew that because that's what we're cooking today. She said, I'll be here now. You're good. <laughs> You're helping us fill in the gaps. All right. So while that cooks down a little bit, ooh, we're going to um, kind of give a little crush to the tomato. Um, but be careful because they are full of like liquid and seeds and so forth. So that will spit out all over the place if you're not careful. It's all right. Your husband will clean it up later. Yay! <laughs> Robin says, I need some of those ingredient bowls. Uh, Brian's been doing this for a long time. So we have accumulated so much stuff along the way. So, But um, some of them are like, like some of the ingredient bowls, like the one that you had the nutmeg in, we bought those because you did a dinner party where we had caviar, and so you put yes, the caviar. Yes, was a little caviar dish. In those, yeah. Um, yes, I, uh, we throw lots of dinner parties, and when I throw a dinner party, it's generally a minimum of what five five courses. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Mm -hmm. That's on the minimum a five course dinner. Um, sometimes I've had dinner courses as high as sixteen. I think. Well, when we did uh, down in Key West, we did the twelfth night. Oh, and you yes. did everything, every course was done on, on your old grill. Yeah, and that was 12 courses. That was 12 courses, yeah. On uh, a 12 night party. He is very fancy, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Nancy, add the nutmeg. I thought he said that. Did, maybe they missed it. Yes, missed add the it. nutmeg. That's fine. Yep, go ahead and add the nutmeg. And if you're adding it now, it's fine too. Um, the cinnamon stick, the nutmeg. So everything that should be in here now. Um, you should have uh, the two medium chopped onions. Uh, two ounces or two tablespoons of the fat from from the lamb, um, the uh, the bell pepper chopped up, uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, um, <clears throat> the tomato paste, uh, and the whole tomatoes. Uh, and we're gonna cook that down. And while you're cooking it down, kind of like keep kind of pressing down on the tomatoes to kind of break them up a bit. 
and they'll break up kind of easily on their own as they warm up and as they get sauteed down. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna let that saute just a little longer. And we're gonna add the meat back in that we've drained off, we've strained off all the meat, right? While that, um, actually let's go ahead and throw the meat back in. All right. So I know Nancy and Kara, I don't think they did lamb, I think they used ground beef. Did anyone else um, use something different besides lamb, like a ground beef, or do we have any veggies that uh, used a substitute? Be interested to, to hear about that. And see pictures. Please take pictures, because I like to use them for like Instagram stories uh, and things like that along the way. So never yeah. hesitate to take a picture. Kara takes amazing pictures of their food and their cookies. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let that we're gonna let that saute down a little bit. Meanwhile, we're gonna start on our bechamel sauce for the top. Um, actually, we're gonna add um, a little red wine. <clears throat> or the red wine vinegar if you didn't want to red use red wine. Vinegar. Yep. Yeah, we'll recycle that later. If you're not vegetarian, it really is so much better with lamb. <laughs> wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say? Yes, yes, yes. I left my sp with a spoon over here. All right. So we're gonna cook that down, because all the red wine and everything like that, um, or vinegar, we're gonna <laughs> cook that off, and it's gonna cook way down. Um, so it'll just be a nice, Shouldn't be too liquidy when we're done. Um, I forgot to comment that Su when I said your husband will clean it up, that Susan commented and said my husband won't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to uh, throw our, we've got a saucepan that we're going to put on to medium heat. Um, and we're going to dump in. Um, Six, uh, six tablespoons of butter that we're going to melt into that pan. Oh, and then, I uh, almost forgot, our oven that's at 475, we can drop that down to 400. I had one job. You had one job to do. <laughs> Well, you have two. I had two. Yeah. Remind me about the oven. And, and then clean, remind you to clean up the kitchen. Yeah, and clean up the kitchen. Um, all right. So well played, sir. We're going to uh, uh, turn our, our oven down to 400. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. But you're still fine. I mean, because yeah. we still have to make the bechamel and stuff. So. Yeah, we still have to make the bechamel. It'll you can even prop it up a little bit to cool it down. But it'll be fine. Um, all right. So our butter is melting. Our meat is stewing. Sauces are cooking down. Nice. How is everyone else's kitchen smelling right now? Obviously besides Robert's that smells like chocolate chip cookies. Because <laughs> ours smells really good. Mmm. Oh, and I'm the commenter and, and videoer, so thank you, Brenda. Exactly. Oh, you have several jobs. I, I, I'm, I have many hats. You have many, so many, many hats. hats. You're so busy. <laughs> I don't know where, how you find the time to do it all. Thank you, Kate. Because she goes, I know that cleanup after the chef life. I know you do, girl. <laughs> I'm pretty good at keeping things. You are. You, you do keep a very, you do. You do. Um, Robert says, if we've learned nothing in the past few weeks, we all know not to let Mark set the oven temps. Right? Thank you, Robert. 
<laughs> yes, we, we, that's true. That's true. Yeah. We have learned that. Yeah. Mark is not good with the oven temperature. Well, not live. <laughs> I do fairly well when I'm uh, on my own. <laughs> All right. So we're going to grab our whisk. We're going to take uh, our flour. So we've got a half a cup of flour, six tablespoons of butter, and we're going to make um, a roux. A roux is a French word on um, where it's just flour and butter uh, and makes like a paste consistency. Um, and that's a thickening agent for um, if you're going to make a velouté, which is uh, a, a white uh, sauce with, with, uh, with a veal stock or chicken stock or fish stock. Um, you, it's the same base that you would put in um, a brown sauce, um, which is with beef stock. Um, but uh, so it should just look very like like a like a smooth paste. Um, once that's done, uh, we're gonna add in our milk, which is two and a half cups of milk. So we've got six tablespoons of butter, half a cup of flour. Melt the butter, add the flour, make a paste, add in the milk. In your, you know, if you were to add uh, warm up milk and then add butter and flour, you're going to end up with lumps. Um, so even when you're making like a gravy at Thanksgiving, uh, make the roof, make the, the, the milk and so forth. Um, and it, you'll never get a lump that way in your gravy. Nobody wants a lumpy gravy. Mm -mm. While that is thickening up and our meat is stewing down, uh, we're going to separate some eggs and we want three egg yolks. Okay. And I think we've talked about this last time. Um, nice save. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, you can do the way my mother taught me, I think, was you try to split the egg in half and then you pass it back and forth between the shells. I just go old school messy and let the let the egg white grip between my fingers. And it will release. There it is. Oh. Are you guys losing us? Because I'm showing us on here. Are we lost? Uh, Julie said, I lost you. Nancy says lost. Is anybody else having problems? Because it's, it's streaming. Or did somebody else add something? Kate's good. Okay. Okay. Keep us, uh, a little bit of distortion. All right, so we're just uh, continuing to saute this down. A lot of the liquid is, is simmering off, so that's good. Is anyone else seeing any distortion? Oh, Jennifer says it went out and I just reloaded it. So maybe back out. Oh. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, I'm gonna continue stirring this um, occasionally to make sure that it doesn't get too thick on us. Um, all right, that's looking good. Ah, oh, smells so good. This is starting to thicken up nicely. So if anyone uh, lost this for a second, we haven't done anything else. You've just been, nope. you separated the egg yolks separated and the egg been yolks. stirring the, the um, root. So, so the I have three egg yolks that we're going to um, temper in a little bit later uh, in a second here. Once this is thickens up, we're going to remove it from the heat. Um, so, so far it's just the six tablespoons of butter, melt it down, add the flour, um, stir that in um, and so that you have like a nice little paste. Uh, and then you're going to add your milk um, and you're going to heat that up. And as it heats up, it's going to get nice and like a thick, thick gravy, um, which is what we want. 
You're right, Robin. I've said that before too. She said um, everybody's on Facebook. Um, uh, we do have a lot of people who do stream, you know, live, and so I, yeah, I think it just overwhelms the. The service. Yeah, there. It's getting really thick, nice and thick now. Um, let's grab a spoon and I'll show you what's going on. Yeah. Oh. So it is so, like a gravy. It's like a thick, thick gravy. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, there you go. We're actually going to go just a little thicker than the thick gravy. Almost like a cake batter thickness. All right. We're going to remove that from the heat. And we're going to uh, add a little bit of salt and pepper. Maybe like a teaspoon of salt. Fresh ground pepper. Oh, I used to be the worst too. It, it, it happens. You, the thing with brews, you have to watch it start. Go ahead. All right, so then we're going to temper in one egg yolk at a time. Because we don't want to end up with scrambled egg. All right. And then we're going to, uh, we have some farmer's cheese, uh, which is also uh, can be a queso fresco. It's just a fresh cheese, so it crumbles up. It's got not a lot of flavor. It's just a um, just real cheesy. It adds a little cheesiness. And this is also kind of how you make um, cheese sauce for macaroni and cheese, minus the eggs. Um, we're going to stir that until it melts in, and we're going to add in uh, a couple of tablespoons of grated Parmesan. Now the parmesan won't melt as, as evenly, so right now it's gonna, I'm going to let it rest while we're cooking, while we stir this a little bit, and that'll warm up the cheese, and uh, oh, look at that, sautés nice, almost all the liquid's gone. Give this a little bit of a stir. Again. Alright, so now we're going to grab. Hey Dee. Dee St. Martin's on. Oh nice. We got uh, our eggplant. We have, um, we've Mark was kind enough to butter my pan. Um, one recipe that I read actually used some of the additional um, lamb fat to grease your pan with, which is great. Um, great use of that lamb fat, and also additional flavor in the in the dish. So that's awesome. All right, so our liquid has reduced down to almost nothing. We're going to take our cinnamon stick out of there. Mm. You don't want to bite into that. <laughs> no, nobody wants to bite into that. It wouldn't taste so good. All right, so now we're going to just line our pan with the, with the slices of eggplant. Um, Those that are cooking with us, are you with us? Is everybody good? All right, so, as you can see, um, I've lined the bottom of the pan with the eggplant. And now we're going to uh, take a spoon.
Almost. Do we need to slow down for a second, Carolyn? Are you okay? Okay. Um, I think so. Okay. So yeah, so we got our layer of eggplant in there, and then we're just, now we're just gonna layer in um, our, our meat. The whole thing. Hey, Ford. Getting there, I have a crap stove. Um, where, where are you at? Is there something we can help you move along? Or are you okay? to layer in a top layer of eggplant. Just layer now, okay good. You'll also see once we're done, we're gonna have a little bit of time so we can talk through any issues as well. <laughs> we went a little Julie Child on this episode. <laughs> we did go a little Julia Child on this one, um, and by that what we mean is uh, we've, we've uh, the cook time on this is a little long, so. Um, all right, so we've put the rest of the remaining uh, eggplant across the top. So now we have a layer across the bottom, the meat through the middle, and a uh, layer of eggplant on the top. And, um, and now we're going to just layer in uh, we're going to layer in our, our bush now right across the top. I have to say, it's so funny because, like I said before, I've had moussaka quite a few times at restaurants. I honestly never realized it was eggplant because the way it cooks, like you, like you said, you don't realize you're, that's what you're, the base is, essentially, yeah. you know? Yeah. All right. So that is a nice smooth across the top. And we're just going to put that in our 400 degree 400 oven. 400 degree. 400 because your husband did not forget. Oven. Uh... I'm putting a pan underneath it, uh, just so that if it was to boil up and over, it just keeps my oven clean. But... And there you go. Uh, we're going to set that timer for... Uh, I think we said 35? 30, it's 30, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on your oven. Um, my oven bakes pretty rapidly, so uh, it will be right around the 30 minute range. Uh, is what we found out. What it's going to look like is it's going to have a nice little toastiness across the top. And then let it cool, just like a lasagna, when you bake a lasagna, you want to let it cool. Um, For a good, we said almost 40 minutes, didn't we say, on Sunday? 30, yeah, 5, 40 minutes. Least, I think we let it cool for like 30 minutes and we it was did still 30. a little too, but I think that also was partly because ours was a little soupier because we didn't strain off the tomatoes. Yeah, but we realized as we were eating it and letting it cool even more that like you really do want to get it to a... Uh, a nice place. As yes. Place. Um, so, um, that being said, that being said uh, like we said, we did a Julia Child on this. Um, so it's one of those things where we actually have one already done um, that we sampled on Sunday. You can see we already cut some out. Um, but we reheated it in the oven um, for you guys today. Do you want to bring it up to the... Um, yep. Okay, sorry. Um, so, here it is. So nice, nice, uh, nice toastiness across the top. You can see the the layer of the bushmel and the meat, and you barely see the fact that there's eggplant in there. But it's uh, there's a layer across the bottom and a layer across the top. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cut some up, um, and we'll stay on to answer some questions. Um, yeah. Oh, oh. So Robin says, uh, "Is your hubby a professional chef, or is this an amazing hobby?" <laughs> um, so it's yes. become an amazing hobby. No, he has been a chef. Um, I was a chef for about 20 some years. Yeah. All uh, up and down the East Coast, essentially. Uh, New York, Connecticut, started Boston. In, started in Minneapolis. All right. 
Very true, Julie. Julie says, nice idea with the pan to keep the mess down. One less thing for Mark to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see there it is. Your layers, beautiful. Comes up once it's cooled down, like I said. And you can this whole time we've had that sitting in the oven at about 175. Yes. So. Yeah, so we just reheated it at 175. Um, and uh, there you go. We'll put a little mint sprig on top. Oh, uh, you sold Susan. They're going to start growing eggplant in our garden. Good. <laughs> and there it is. Lusaka. Fantastic. Um, so we'll stay on for another minute or two to answer any questions if anyone has any questions um, from where they're at. But also, I realized that we dropped the ball on our end because we have gotten some suggestions, but we did not uh, really discuss where we want to land next on our world tour. Next on the world tour. Um, that is a good question. Are we thinking Spain? Um, that would be a great stop. Let's go to Spain. You want to do Spain? Spain is fun. I, I mean, I just, I love Italy, and I would love to go to Italy, but I feel like I, as we do this show more often, there'll be a lot of Italian food. Well, we did so, the first two. And the first two episodes yeah, we were the, pretty much Italian food. Yeah. So, uh, let's go to Spain. Let's go to Spain. Spain, sound good? How does everybody feel? Uh, sprinkle the parm on top? Yes, you can sprinkle that leftover Parmesan on top. Yep. It's really nice. Fantastic. Um, and then, you know, after you're all said and done, enjoy it with a little oh. uzo and, uh, as a digestive. Carolyn says paella. <laughs> Ooh, I don't have a paella pan. You don't have one. Oh, I'm, we're not buying any more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we can't afford to buy any stuff. Um, <laughs> well, we just got some new, uh, I just, you just bought yourself a new set of stuff, so that was A nice. couple, a couple of pans that we didn't have. Yeah. yeah. We didn't have a, a um, large saute pan, so. Yeah, I don't have a paella pan, and you really need a, you really need a paella pan to do it right. Um, Carolyn, do you have one? <laughs> do it without a paella pan? I, let me, let's think about that. Paella might be fun. Because paella is uh, really good. And it is really good. Very great for like... It's yeah. a, but it's... Okay, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, Timing-wise and ingredient-wise and... Um, Oliva. Saffron. She said no. <laughs> no. Um, all right. I've been really impressed. <laughs> so this was a fun stop in Greece. Um, and uh, I love the Greek Isles. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy their flavors. Thank you. Cheers. We'll see you next week in Spain.